right, get ready for the shortest set of lecture notes I think I will ever have made on a completely new thing to most of y'all, which is the phosphorus cycle. So you talked about the nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle, when you were uh, a freshman, when you were doing ecology, but you probably haven't talked about the phosphorus cycle, yet phosphorus is also going to be an important atom for living things. So if you um, bear with me, let's get go ahead and start talking about what atoms and molecules contain phosphorus. So in, as far as biological molecules go, um, organic molecules, it's just nucleic acids. You may have talked about your freshman year, um, the different elements that you'll find in uh, different biomolecules. And you may remember that they may have talked about CHOMP, which is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus being present in nucleic acids because they have phosphate groups. So any sort of compound that's got a phosphate ion, which is a PO4, and it is a negatively charged ion, is going to be a uh, is going to be a phosphate group. Okay. So now let's talk about the reservoirs in the phosphorus cycle. It is mostly going to involve the rock cycle. Um, and so a major reservoir for phosphorus is going to be the lithosphere, by which I mean rocks and sediments that are going to have phosphorus containing minerals. So the source of these uh, phosphorus containing molecules is going to be sedimentation. So you have something that is heavy in phosphorus, falls to uh, the ground, falls to the bottom of a body of water, and that forms sedimentary rock, and then that goes into the rock cycle. And usually the source of um, phosphorus for other parts of the phosphorus cycle is going to be erosion of these rocks. So it's a very slow cycle, very slow process. So then you have the biosphere, which is going to contain, uh, consist mostly of nucleic acids. And the source is that producers are generally going to absorb phosphates from either the soil or the water that got deposited there from erosion or runoff. And then decomposition is going to take of those um, phosphorus containing molecules and probably produce phosphates that are going to go back into the soil or the water. And phosphates can dissolve in water. Um, so there is a water reservoir as well. So here we see in general the phosphorus uh, cycle. Um, notice there's nothing in the atmosphere. The only reason why we have something up there is precipitation because it's gonna cause weathering and erosion. That is going to release phosphates, which will be in runoff that can then enter water or they can end up forming part of soil. Plants are gonna take in phosphates and then those can be eaten by other organisms or when um, organisms, plants, etc., die, then that can be broken down by decomposers which can put phosphates either into the soil or phosphates can enter the water. So then you have dissolved phosphates can be taken up by plankton and other producers in aquatic biomes and it can then join the food web in marine or aquatic ecosystems and then decomposition will then add more phosphates back into the water however sometimes things are going to go into sedimentation where you'll have some phosphorus rich sediment that ends up getting compacted and then turned into rock and so then you have entering the major reservoir of the phosphor cycle rock itself so there is no atmospheric component in the phosphorus cycle. You do not have a gaseous form of phosphorus. It's kind of too heavy for that. So even if you had something in the atmosphere, it'd usually be dust, which would then come out next time it rained. So because of this, um, it's really gonna limit how uh, phosphorus containing compounds can return from ocean back to land. Because if you look at the carbon cycle, you know, carbon dioxide can go from the ocean to the, the air, and then that can be taken up by plants so that it can go into terrestrial ecosystems. Nitrogen, you can have nitrogen in the water, but then you can also have denitrifying bacteria return that to the air. In phosphorus, you don't have an atmospheric component, and so that can uh, end up limiting the amount of phosphorus that you have available in aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. And since it's so dependent on the rock cycle, 
phosphorus is a much slower cycle than the other elements. So it's going to take a lot longer to, to remove phosphorus from the environment and also put it back into the environment from rock. So this leads to the fact that um, in an ecosystem, phosphorus can be a major limiting factor. Um, and this is without human activity uh, affecting the phosphorus cycle. So let's say the square here, this rectangle represents an ecosystem. You'll have a lot of water in that ecosystem. So unless you're in like a desert environment, water doesn't really limit the life that can grow there. You'll have plenty of carbon there as well. So carbon's not really gonna limit what can grow there. You've also usually got a bunch of nitrogen as well, but notice phosphorus is going to be lowest in abundance. There's going to be less of it. And so since there's less of it, um, you know, without phosphorus, you can't make DNA, you can't make RNA, and you also can't make ATP. And if you remember, ATP is what for a cell? It is energy. So when you don't have enough phosphorus, you can't make new cells and you may not be able to power the cells that you have. So the amount of phosphorus in an ecosystem can limit how many organisms can be supplied there. And that kind of leads to how humans impact the phosphorus cycle. We mine phosphorus. We'll dig up rock that's heavy in phosphorus or we'll find other sources of phosphorus. For example, guano, which is mostly bat poop and is heavy in phosphorus and is often used as a fertilizer. And we'll use these things as fertilizers for growing crops or in our yards. Um, then also we have those large, um, they're called CAFOs, animal feedlots, where you have a lot of poop or excretion being released, which is gonna build up phosphorus in the soil. Humans also poop and that goes into sewage and that can be a source of phosphorus. Detergents actually contain a lot of phosphates and we'll talk more about that in the future when we talk about some pollutants. You can also have some industry producing phosphorus as well. A lot of this stuff ends up in the soil, which can then end up draining into the water, and that can cause something called eutrophication, which we talked about briefly in the nitrogen cycle, and which we're gonna talk about quite a bit in the future. So that was the phosphorus cycle, like I said, very quick, very short. And now we're going to move on to energy, which means food webs and food chains, so don't panic.